Good morning once again, student. Today we are coming to discuss a very important structure within the eyeball that might be overlooked throughout your own career as a medical doctor or medical personnel. Oftentimes, people talk about conjunctivitis. It's a very common term that people talk about conjunctivitis. But the question is, what is conjunctivitis? You may say inflammation or infection of the conjunctiva. But the question that follows is, where is the conjunctiva? And we are lost. So today we're going to discuss about what the conjunctiva is, where it is found, the parts, and so many other uh, exciting things within some short period. So we're going to talk about the conjunctiva today, right? So what is the conjunctiva? It is a mucous membrane, all right? There are several mucous membranes in the body, but in the eye, there's no exception either. So it is the mucous membrane lining the posterior surface of the eyelid and the anterior surface of the eyeball. It's a mucous membrane which is found at the posterior surface of the eyelids and then the anterior surface of the eyeball itself. Okay, so for example, this is conjunctiva where my case is. Okay, that's the conjunctiva. Remember, this is the cornea, right? Okay, so this is also conjunctiva. It's from the posterior surface of the eyelid. Okay. This is also conjunctiva. It's found at the posterior inverted surface of the eyelid. We can also find that there is another one here, but that's called the bulbar. Okay, that's also conjunctiva. That's the limbus, and that there will be the cornea. All right. So this is also conjunctiva, or this area is the conjunctiva, and this other part too is the conjunctiva. And in between the two, two, there is what, what we call the conjunctiva. So this conjunctiva here, conjunctiva there, and the inner area where there is indentation is also what conjunctiva. So this is conjunctiva here, all right? And that is conjunctiva here, and that is it here, okay? So uh, there are a few things that we need to know when the conjunctiva is concerned, all right? So, it's transparent in nature, all right? The conjunctiva is transparent in nature, as you can see here, okay? It is vascularized. It has few vessels in it, and the vessels that supply the conjunctiva include anterior ciliary artery, that is the main artery which feeds the conjunctiva. But it also has veins that collect uh, substances or nausea substances from it. These include the anterior ciliary veins, the superior of tummy vein, and the inferior of tummy vein. Again, the conjunctiva has what? Lymphatic drainage. It has lymphatic drainage. The medial portion of the conjunctiva. Okay, let me get the proper one. The media portion, okay, this side, or the nasal portion of conjunctiva drains into the submandibular lymph nodes. The media portion drains into the submandibular lymph nodes, whilst the lateral portion drains into the preauricular lymph nodes. Okay, so the media portion drains into the submandibular lymph nodes. Whereas the lateral portion of the conjunctiva drains into what preauricular lymph nodes. So therefore, don't be surprised that when there is any conjunctival lesion, we need to go palpating for submandibular and preauricular lymph nodes. What are the cells that can be found in the conjunctiva? Okay, so there are two major types of cells. Two major. There could be other ones, but two major ones. One is called the squamous epithelial cells, squamous epithelial cells, okay? And the other is called goblet cells, squamous epithelial cells, and then what? Goblet cells. 
the goblet cells are in their highest concentration at the inferomedia, at the inferomedia part of the conjunctiva. The goblet cells, okay, they are in their highest concentration at the inferomedia or inferonasal part of the conjunctiva. What is squamous epithelial cells are found surrounding the goblet cells. So, these two cells, what do they produce? They produce mucin or mucus. They produce mucin or mucus. Okay, another thing. What type of epithelium is present within the conjunctiva? It is stratified squamous non keratinizing epithelium. Stratified, okay? Squamous non keratinizing epithelium that is found within the conjunctiva. Now, we are coming to talk about um, the parts that of the, the conjunctiva has. The parts, alright? So, Remember, okay, let's talk about few characters. We say it is transparent, okay? What it therefore means that the white you are seeing here, it means you are seeing through the conjunctiva because it's transparent. So what you are seeing basically is a sclera, right? So let me talk about the parts of the conjunctiva. It has three major parts. It has the palpebra part, the bulbar part, and then the phonesia, okay? It has the palpebra part in Latin. When we talk about palpebra or palpebra, it refers to the eyelid. So palpebra conjunctiva is that conjunctiva which is found at the inner surface of the eyelid. And this is an everted or an eyelid which has been turned inside out. So this is the palpebra, okay? When you hear Papebrum or papebra in Latin refers to the eyelid. So the inner lining of the eyelid, you find the conjunctiva, and that conjunctiva is called what? the papebra conjunctiva. Alright? So, which one is the bulbar conjunctiva? So it's also papebra conjunctiva. Okay? The eyelid has been averted or turned inside out. So this is where you find the papebra conjunctiva okay that's the papebra conjunctiva so this is also papebra conjunctiva within the lower lid have you seen the lower eyelid has been turned inside out and what you see the inner lining here is the conjunctiva okay papebra conjunctiva so this is bulbar conjunctiva because the bulbar refers to the globe, the eyeball itself. This is the eyeball itself. And that conjunctiva, which is found on top of the eyeball, okay, itself, okay, it's called the bulbar conjunctiva. So, between the two, and this is the papebra conjunctiva, okay, and between the bulbar and the papebra conjunctiva is the phonesia conjunctiva. It's found as where we call the cul de sac. Cul de sac. That furrow, that opening over there, that angle in between the bulbar or the eyeball itself and the eyelid, you call it cul de sac. And that part of the conjunctiva is known as well, the phonesia because it's found at the phonix. Okay, at the phonic, so it's called Phonesia conjunctiva. Alright, so let me draw your attention to something. The conjunctiva, the palpebra conjunctiva, is stretched from the mucocutaneous junction. Okay, this is a mucocutaneous junction up to the Phonics, okay, that is where the papebra conjunctiva extends. It extends from mucocutaneous junction and ends at the phonics. Then at the phonics, that is where you have the phonesia conjunctiva, all right? Then where is the bulbar conjunctiva? It extends 
from the fornix up to the limbus. It extends from the fornix up to the limbus. That's the bulbar conjunctiva. So again, this is a mucocutaneal junction. The papebral conjunctiva extends from the mucocutaneal junction up to the fornix. Okay? And from the fornix up to the limbus is where what we have and we call what? Bulbar conjunctiva. And of course, at the fornix, that is where we have the fornicia conjunctiva. For your information, the conjunctiva is very elastic. Okay? So, this is a papebral conjunctiva. It extends from the mucocutaneous junction, okay, and comes all the way up to the fornix, all right? And this is the bulbar conjunctiva, which stretches from the fornix up to the limbus, all right? So, here you are. This is the papebral conjunctiva, stretches from the mucocutaneous junction all the way up to the fornix and what you see here is what the bulbar conjunctiva all right so this is the bulbar conjunctiva that you can see easily here it has turned from the limbus all the way up to the fornix okay or in this direction up to the carancle all right so that is about However, we should remember that when we talk about the papebra conjunctiva, this is also subdivided into what? Marginal conjunctiva, the tarsal conjunctiva, and the orbital conjunctiva. Okay? So, when we talk about the papebra conjunctiva, which is this one, it's also subdivided into what? Marginal conjunctiva, the tarsal conjunctiva, and of course, the orbital conjunctiva. Okay, what is the difference? The marginal conjunctiva is that which is found at the margin of the eyelid at the inner side. Okay, it's about two millimeters from the mucocutaneous junction. Okay, the tarsal conjunctiva is found at the inner portion of the tarsal plate which contains the meibomian glands. Okay, so that's the tarsal conjunctiva. All right, so um, you have the marginal conjunctiva here. Okay, you have the tarsal conjunctiva and of course the orbital conjunctiva. All right. So the orbital conjunctiva is found deeper at its posterior to the tarsal conjunctiva. Okay, so that is it within the papibrum or within the eyelids. Again, let's talk about the bulbar conjunctiva. Okay, let's talk about the bulbar conjunctiva. The bulbar conjunctiva is also subdivided into what? Scleral conjunctiva. Which is that which is found on the sclera and then limba conjunctiva. Okay, so the bulbar conjunctiva is subdivided into what sclera conjunctiva, that is as you find here, sclera conjunctiva, and the limba conjunctiva, which is found at the limbus. The limba conjunctiva is found at the limbus. So, as you find here. This is not very clear, but remember, this will be what the sclera conjunctiva, and the area around the limbus will be what the limba conjunctiva. All right, again, this will be what your bulbar conjunctiva subdivided into what sclera. The sclera is a whitish area, so that conjunctiva found on the sclera is known as what the sclera conjunctiva, and that which is found. At the level of the limbus, we got the limba conjunctiva. Okay, again, so here will be what the sclera conjunctiva, and that found around the limbus, we got limba conjunctiva. That is about the bulbar conjunctiva. Then, how is the phonicia conjunctiva divided? Okay, the phonicia conjunctiva, remember, there are two major phonices. Okay. In fact, four major, four of them, one inferior, okay, 
one superior, okay, one media, another one lateral. So remember that the furnace has four major parts, okay? You have inferior phonics, superior phonics up here, the media phonics, okay, and of course the lateral phonics. So therefore, it is obvious and logical to also have what? Four types of the phonicia conjunctiva, namely the inferior phonicia conjunctiva, superior phonicia conjunctiva, the media phonicia conjunctiva, which is close to the current curve, and of course the lateral phonicia conjunctiva. It is of utmost importance to also know that the conjunctiva has functions, okay? It's gotten functions. What are these? What are the functions of the conjunctiva? Well, it provides protection and lubrication of the ocular surface by producing tears and mucus or moussing. So, it provides protection and lubrication of the ocular surface, okay? By what? Producing tears and mucus. If it doesn't produce tears and mucus or mucin, then it cannot bring about the lubrication, the ease of movement of the eyeball in all directions. It's only possible when there's appropriate lubrication and uh, watering of the ocular surface. And this cannot be possible if the conjunctiva was not there, okay? It takes part in what tear production, mucus production, and helps in lubricating and protecting the ocular surface. It also prevents microbial entrance into the eye. Remember that this is a mucous membrane, and all mucous membranes have what protective layers that prevent microbial agents or organisms from entering into the structures per se, right? So there's a lining here, there's a lining on the ocular surface, but for these linings, okay, microorganisms could easily penetrate into the eyeball and cause infections or havoc that will worry us so much. But for the presence of the conjunctiva, microorganisms cannot enter into our eyes and cause infections. It also plays a role in immune surveillance, okay? It has a immune complex and this protects the ocular surface against uh, invasive agent. So students, this is where I bring my lecture to an end so far as the conjunctiva is concerned. Keep listening to the YouTube's continual reading Put down your questions or difficulties and when we meet in class we're going to clarify them for you and i'll see you again stay safe and keep learning hard all right